Um, I, you've had a couple of days to think about it. So before you even even start answering the many questions that I've got, can I just say, I flicked on the telly yesterday, mate, to watch my beloved Wellington play Taranaki. And there was the trifecta of Nisbo, Smithy and Marshy. <laughs> I was thinking, the logistics involved, where did you fly up from Christchurch? Yeah, we did. Yep, straight back on the tools on Sunday, which was, was actually quite refreshing because obviously we did over a, a couple of cold beers, um, a bit of a debrief, and it was quite a... I guess, a, a difficult conversations to be having after the All Black test. So to be able to move on to that, from that quite quickly and do and do an NPC uh, game in the afternoon was actually quite good because it got the mind away from it, to be honest. Look, one thing I can't be, mate, and I, I don't know whether you think the same, I can't be bitter and twisted about losing to Argentina because I actually love everything that they bring to rugby. I mean, I'm obviously I'm peeved about the loss like we all are, but there's something about them, isn't there? The way they celebrated and everything else. I mean, you know, how do you, do you feel a little... A little, I suppose, the, the, does the loss hurt any any less because it's them as opposed to if it was Australia, England or South Africa or whatever? Oh, the, look, there's no doubt in my mind that they are an easier team to, to lose against than others in terms of fallout and the way it makes you feel. Um, but look, to, to be perfectly honest, uh, Marty, I I, uh, I have to look further afield than that. And, and that's at obviously the, the history of the All Black jersey, the legacy of the jersey. The blood, sweat, tears, uh, the, the great All Blacks of the past that have gone into forging, you know, incredible records uh, against teams like Argentina that that this team are continuing to break uh, in, in the wrong fashion and, and in a negative way. And uh, that's the thing that hurts me the most at the moment. Um, the state that the, the state of the jersey that uh, it's from week to week, from series to series, has, has been affected by the performance of the side and. Um, you know, I, I find that the most frustrating thing out of out of everything, mate. Look, look, what I'm concerned about now, and I, I don't want to rant too much, sure, but mate, I sorry. have to have my say. Go on. Um, is everybody's talking about this whole crisis of getting to, you know, get this team getting to a World Cup and the possibility of winning the Rugby World Cup? Well, what 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 is more prevalent now is the damage that again is being done to the jersey right here, right now. A World Cup's not relevant to me because we have now with this side lost to the French for the first time, I think, in just over 20 years. Uh, we've lost an Irish series um, and, a, and an Irish test in Ireland for the first time in the, his, in the history of All Black Rugby. We've now dropped the test match to Argentina in our own country for the, the first time in history. We've got Japan coming up. We've got Scotland who have never beaten us. We've got Wales who haven't beaten us in nearly 70 years. You know, they, they'll, this jersey will be in a... a a hell of a place if we don't get things right now. Bugger the World Cup. Yeah, I'm, know, with like, I'm with you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, to look, I'm totally, I'm totally with you, mate. And it's actually a really sobering position to be in. Oh. And also, when you listen to those stats as well. And look, this is a Jap Japanese side. Don't forget, they beat Ireland and Scotland at the last World Cup, Justin. Now, when you say that out loud right now, to mm. beat Ireland and Scotland within two weeks of each other, I'd take those two wins right today, mate. You know, and so would every other rugby fan in the world. So let's not write off Japan. Okay, I want to... I want to go back to Alice Park. Was was that a blip? Was was what we saw in the last twelve minutes, especially at Alice Park, a blip? Is was that the real All Blacks, or was what we saw on Saturday night the real All Blacks? Because if you look at the the last eight tests, we've lost six: Ireland, France, Ireland, Ireland, South Africa, Argentina. And I'm really worried that what we saw at Alice Park was a one-off. Alice Park was was an anomaly in the mix because Alice Park was a desperate side. Underdogs. How often have the All Blacks gone as two dollars seventy underdogs into a Test match? It Never. Was at Alice Park. Never. It was against a side that was very, was very consistently picked. It was at, at at altitude. Everything was against the All Blacks. So they they played without any weight on their shoulders because they they they, they didn't have that expectation that they usually have from week to week to week. So they played instinctively. They played the field. They 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 played without worrying about the consequences of making a mistake in the wrong parts of the field because they were quite prepared to go out there and throw the kitchen sink at, at South Africa. We, we arrived back in New Zealand after a performance where we play the style and type of rugby that all blacks play. That's in our DNA. That's how we feed teams defensively. That's how we make them fall off tackles because we play them across the park. We get back to Christchurch and we become negative again because we start thinking about the result. We start thinking about the fact that we're expected to win. 
Uh, and all of a sudden, after 33 seconds, a player who never box kicked the game once in a test match at Ellis Park kicks the ball away. And we go back to being afraid to play out of our own half. We, we were almost uh, playing uh, with a mindset of negativity. So in answer to your question, what we saw as a team with all its capabilities playing uninhibited at Ellis Park, and then two weeks later we see a team that goes insular and starts playing negatively for some reason. And I can't work out why the hell we are doing it. Justin Marshall is with us, 81 Test veteran. He's calling it a course alongside Nisbo and Smithy from, from Christchurch on Saturday night. I've got so many questions for you. They may not be in, in the right order, so forgive me for that. First and foremost, I want to get this one out of the way, though. Um, Tony Johnson this morning quoted on, on AM saying that uh, if this keeps going, well, then Ian Foster's going to be, be in a position where he's going to have to fall on his own sword. If we lose the Bledisloe Cup, uh, are we still in a, in, a, in, a, in a coaching conundrum where we're still debating whether or not Ian Foster is going to take us through to the World Cup or not? I thought he'd been backed by New Zealand rugby, and I thought that argument was over, win, lose, or draw. Yeah, I, 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 tend, I believe that I agree with what you've just said. I think that unequivocably they, they, they backed Ian Foster. They said there would be no more reviews, no more changes. Uh, that, that this was the, the, the side, the squad, the coaching group uh, to take the, the, the All Blacks through to the end of the Rugby World Cup. So I, I, don't, I don't see, unless there's an absolute catastrophe, um, not that what's happening at the moment isn't bad enough, uh, that, that changing. Um, so... Well, what has to happen is, is this team have to have to wake up real quick. So, no, I, I don't see in the foreseeable future a change because I believe that the message has been quite clear, give, given by the New Zealand Rugby Union, that this is the formula all the way through till the end of 2023. Justin, the, some of the tactics, mate, it really do confuse me. Look, I thought at 15-6, I thought we were in a great position. When Caleb scored that try, Argentina offered absolutely zero on attack. And even, and even you you know, you uh, take away uh, their try, which was actually just a botched catch off a kickoff from us, which doesn't happen that often. The rest of it was points mm. off the boot. So there's a couple of things that really confuse me. Uh, why take Aaron off after 60 minutes? It's almost like it's written in stone now. The guy can't play 80. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't understand when you're losing a test match why you take your skipper off. And I'm thinking if we go to a World Cup in a quarter or a semi-final or any of those knockout games, what, at 60 minutes, no matter what the score is, we take him off, do we? We take this. I, I, I don't understand this. Why take the front row off after 50 minutes when they're competing so well and demolish their scrum? Answer me those. Yeah, well, I saw some of the dialogue uh, post the test match um, com coming from Ian Foster trying to explain his rationale behind some of those decisions. Obviously, the, the other one that really raised my eyebrows was, was Peto Feta, yes. you know, giving giving a guy a test debut to to have to, to, to deal with 55 minutes without the ball, uh, 55 seconds without the ball was a bit bemusing, to be fair. But, yeah, look, I, I agree whether, whether or not they are actually putting enough thought into it. Look, I, I hear that what they were saying, that they felt that we were, the group was struggling a bit and um, so was Lomax. So they felt that, that, that they needed for Synergy to completely change the front row. Um you know, we don't know the inner workings of what's going on there, whether or not those players were carrying injuries and that needed to happen um, because it felt like they took the best forward on the park off in Tokiaho at that stage. Now, look at uh, Mondoja, the, uh, the Argentinian captain. He played till the 90, the 80, basically the 80th minute, yeah. 79th yeah. minute, I think. Yeah. So, he did. And I, 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 you could see, with, without seeing him on the TV screens, the passion he was, he was just... He was in that match, and I think Michael Checker would have seen him and probably thought, "I usually bring him off before now," but he kept him out there because he needed him out there, and he and he needed his leadership, and he needed what he was doing at the breakdowns there. So he just kept him on because the All Blacks were struggling to stop him from getting turnovers. So you know, there's there's a certain amount of feel in, in that, and I think that's what you're alluding to. You know, if you're looking at it and you're saying, "Oh yeah, we had some ideas," but look, you know, I, I'm seeing this player doing those things and. I'm also feeling that he's still got petrol in the tank. I'm, I'm going to leave him there. I'm going to leave him there. And yeah, I think that's that, that's part of part of the problem that there may be not a lot of common sense in some of the decisions that are being made in that regard. Justin Marshall is with us on the platform. Okay, so 
they made about 200 tackles. The stats were incredible. I think we made 75. They missed seven, which is the same as us. Why persist? And this goes back to a point you are making uh, just a few minutes ago. With this one-off running, when all they need to do is make one-on-one tackles, we saw that in that first test against South Africa. We're just going from side to side. We're not penetrating or breaking through. There's opportunities here maybe for a chip over the top. There's opportunities for Richie Mawanga maybe to take more control. I don't understand, you know, and maybe it's this kind of all of a sudden you get into a negative headspace. I'm not sure, but you're watching that. You must feel the same frustration. Why we keep doing the same thing when all we're doing is running one-on-one getting knocked over, one-on-one getting knocked over. It's, it's not doing doing anything yeah i agree and, and and it's frustrating me I, I feel that there certainly has to be a game plan and, and you can see that there is but adaptation has to be part of a game plan it has you have to have the ability to evolve within a game and go you know what this is what we thought we could do and we could we could hold the ball for long periods of time we could fatigue them we could break them down create line breaks that lead to points and tries we we were we were running into areas where they were just physically dominating us, and I know they've right from the start of the year wanted to go away from the the the, the dual uh, ball ball carrier, at, 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 and they've got rid of the tip. Um, but there was plenty of instances there where I thought a player who was getting double tackled could have tipped the ball onto a player who had a weak shoulder. I thought there was lots of opportunities for return balls. Um, because they were coming up really, really hard, 15 metres either side of the breakdown, but there was space wider. So, look, you know, those decisions you have to... The players have to see that out there. The decision makers, the leaders have to see where the pressure is and and know where to release that valve to find space. Um, But equally, you know, there should be messages coming through from the the coaching team to go, hey, 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 what, what we thought that's not working, try this. Let's let's just go to this for ten minutes and see if we can break them down this way. So, yeah, I, look, I, I can't think that we're that inept. I really can't. I I, I don't think the All Blacks are uh, that non-intelligent as individuals yes, out there on the same, field same. with the experience they've got. And that's what's so frustrating, isn't it? And you know, I know mm. that I know that under load, we all do it. We all go into our shell. We all re- revert to a default thing. But I also think, you know, I watched that Crusaders side in the Blues final just come up to play and muscle and know how to win a game. And I'm looking at most of those same names out there, which is frustrating. Is the loose forward trio, we ask this every time we lose. And and, and Justin, part of the frustration is I hate sitting here and asking these questions when we lose, because we should ask them all the time, shouldn't we? But it's just that, I suppose, you know, we just don't expect what we saw on the weekend. But is that loose forward trio, does does that need a shake-up? You know, is Sam the right guy? All of these same questions keep coming back. I think since I've been talking to you, through, even through Super Rugby, I haven't been convinced, um, Marty, on on the on the loose forward combinations that a lot of our Super Rugby sides are playing, and also that the All Blacks selected. You know, I've always ha- I've always had my doubts about whether whether or not we are going down the pathway that that many of the other international teams are, w- which are big men who carry hard, who work hard. Um, no no doubt in my mind that Ethan Blackadder was a huge loss to the All Black back row this year. You know, like, there's a possibility he even could have been playing number eight, um, I think. Uh, Is that a work rate thing, Justin? Is that what you said? Because because it's not like he, you know, when you look at him, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but what he does offer is he do, does offer an engine, doesn't he, that never stops. Yeah, well, he he's 112 kgs. Oh, there so you he's go. Okay, well, all right, I'll take that yeah. back. Yeah. And, and, and he runs hard, and yes, he, he... I know Scott Robertson said to me before, within the Crusaders camp, they have to hold him back at training because he, he, he just... just runs himself into the ground. He's one of the fittest guys in the squad and he just won't stop. So you know you're going to get massive work rate, but you're going to get uncompromising carry as well. Mm-hmm. He's just going to smash into blokes, smash through them and, and knock players over. But the biggest part of the equation that I'm trying to put my point across for is Artie is quite quite comprehensively our best all black at the moment. Yeah. But I don't think picking him at number eight is helping the balance of our back row. And I don't, He's not a he's not a genuine line out option, so we're already at, at at having problems in the line out. Sam Kane's not a line out option, so we're already down on what many of the other teams have in terms of variety at their line out. Ardy Ardy to me is out of position, but you know I think we've backed ourselves into a corner where we don't feel that there's another option, but. And that's affecting our balance. So we're effectively playing, in my mind, this is me individually, yep. just what I think, sure. two open sides out there. 
We've got it two looks like that, sides yeah, who have got a yeah. similar way of playing, and we we are losing the balance of what a back row should work like and should look like. All right, we've kept you on for long enough. I always appreciate so much of your time, mate. Um, finally, what do we do this weekend? Do you roll the dice and make wholesale changes? But even while I'm saying that, I'm going back to your original point, and you look at it from a different perspective. You look at it from a guy that wore that jersey 81 times, and as far as you're concerned, hell no, we've got history here. There's no way that we actually even risk what losing no. this test to Argentina. So I, I suppose I've answered my own question stupidly. Not to a degree, but I, I still feel that we, we need to open our eyes as to where we can be more effective. And I certainly think that somebody like Will Jordan, who was probably arguably the best player in Super Rugby consistently uh, uh, you know, across this season, we, we, we're not seeing him get into the game because he's struggling to get the space and time and have the vision he needs from the wing. And you know, quite clearly, we have a fullback that is playing like a 12. He is coming in as a first and second receiver. Geordie Barrett was our best carrying back at the weekend. And he was doing that work close to the breakdown as a first or second receiver. Stick him in the 12 jersey. He's six foot six nearly, over 100 kgs, runs hard, and he's playing at fullback like a 12. So we are losing our ability and our width. Yeah, he hit that line off Rico amazing, but he's not out there all the time. And I just feel that a few subtle changes like that and, and in the back row, as I mentioned, maybe just put Artie on the side of the scrum and and uh, and then we and then we will see whether or not that's going to help our back row balance. That's that's some of the th- my thought processes. But whether they'll change or not, I don't know. But by how we need to pull our bloody finger out and play some rugby. Justin, always a pleasure, mate. Thank you so much, and thank you for being so, so generous with your time as always, mate. Brilliant.